Hello, my name is Jacob Monk. Welcome to this little video about a subject that is of my own very, very big interest. I'm a Catholic and I'm very much interested in China. Actually, I'm a fan of China. I see China as the greatest human rights project that has been created in human history. So I'm a fan of the leadership of China. And I'm also a Catholic, as I told you. So therefore, I think it's very interesting what I'm going to show you in this video, that there are so many similarities between the Catholic Church and the Chinese state and government, that you would not believe it. Actually, I think the Chinese state and the Catholic Church, they have just about the same philosophy and the same moral supremacy as I believe uh, they think themselves that they have. And they are right. The funny thing is that China and the Catholic Church, they certainly don't like each other. And there is a reason why they don't like each other. But let's uh, forget this subject just for a moment and see what unites these two big organizations. And uh, let me show you a picture here of uh, the leaders of the Catholic Church in China. Here you have to the left Pope Francis and to the right Xi Jinping, the leader of China 2020. And I have a list of uh, different areas, different moral categories where I think it's very easy to see that there is nearly identical structure and philosophy in China and in the Catholic Church. So actually they should unite their forces because their goals are exactly the same. Point number one, age and size. Well, the Catholic Church is 2,000 years old and China is around 4,000 years old. But the current way of running China, the political system, mariocracy it is called, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, well, uh, this is maybe only 2,000 years old. And the Catholic Church, actually, it's older than 2,000 years, because before the Catholic Church, we had the Jewish religion, and the Catholic Church is and claims to be the uh, modern uh, way of practicing the Jewish religion. Well, you know what happened with the Jews and Jesus. Jews, they voted for Jesus being crucified. And after that, the Catholic Church was started. The Catholics in uh, 2,000 years ago in Palestine, they told the Jews to convert to Christianity, to join the Christian church. You do not have to be circumcised to be a Catholic. Well, this was a criteria if you want to be a Jew. So there are some differences between Jewish religion and Catholic religion. But when it comes to age and size, Catholic religion in China is nearly the same. They are both 1.3 billion members. 1.3 billion Chinese, 1.3 billion Catholics in the world. Of course, China is a national state, while the Catholic Church is a global organization. But both of these organizations, they have a heavy weight on some specific part of the global culture. China is an Asian country. You have to understand Asia, uh, sorry, China on the background on, of the Asian history and uh, the Asian culture. 
the Catholic Church, you can only understand it on the background of European culture and Middle East culture, because the Catholic Church has been developing for 2,000 years, first of all, in Europe today claims to be an international organization but remember uh, 95 percent of the popes that has been leaders of the catholic church they came from italy and uh, italy is a european country i know italy is a modern country but before something was called italy there were other states with Latin language and Latin culture. So the Catholic Church is a pro product of the Latin culture. Let's pass on and see uh, here. The goal of China is to create communion. You know, China is run by a communist party, Communist Party of China. They have 19 million members. It's a very big country. In the Chinese constitution, it is stated that the Communist con uh, Party is the leader of China. And of course, the president of China is a member and also a leader of the Chinese Communist Party. In Rome, the Pope uh, runs the Catholic Church and the highest goal of the Catholic Church is to create communion. Every day when a Catholic goes for the Mass, he goes for communion. It is the same. When two Catholics are speaking with each other, they say, did you receive communion yesterday at the Mass? And the rules are so that if you have committed a mortal sin, you cannot receive communion before you have uh, confessed your sin to a priest. But communion, communion is the highest goal of China and the highest goal of the Catholic Church. Let's continue. Centralism. Both China and the Catholic Church are central-run organizations. In the leadership of the Catholic Church is the Pope, he can uh, make acclamations that are considered to be without faults. Infallibility he has in certain situations, but also in all the other situations where there is no popal infallibility, infallibility then he can uh, make decisions that has effect for the whole Catholic Church and all 1.3 billion members. In China, well, Xi, Xi Jinping cannot uh, make a declamation that will be law for all China. That is not possible. But he is the leader of the Chinese Communist Party and he is also the leader of the Politburo and uh, these governmental organizations that lead the Chinese policy from one day to another. So it is an authoritarian uh, uh, way of running an organization that is being practiced in both one and the other organization. And the very interesting thing is that in China, they have a organizational uh, princip principia that is called democratic centralism. That means you can discuss anything in the party, but when you make a decision, every member, every 19 billion, 19 million members of the party have to follow the this, this decision. That is because they don't want China to be split apart like USA is today before the election 2020 uh, under the rulership of President Donald Trump. USA is nearly some kind of a society with a civil war in uh, among its citizens and China do not want to have the same 
experience and the Catholic Church certainly do not want to be split up with different fractions, different spiritualities, different theologies fighting against each other. And when, if you see on the Catholic Church history, you will see several points of diversion, of split, for example, between the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church, between the Protestants and the Catholics. And the Church do not want to repeat these situations because unity is the, the only real basis for having an impact on the world. And having an impact on the world is the goal of the Catholic Church. Let me continue now. Meriocracy. What is meriocracy? Well, meriocracy is the idea that you elect leaders from their uh, qualifications. It's not like in the elections, in the parliamentary elections in Europe or in uh, USA, where it's a question of popularity. One politician is more popular than the other. This is not what makes a man a pope or makes another man a leader of the Communist Party in China and leader of the state of China. No, the idea is meriocracy. You are evaluated on the basis of what you have done in your previous life. If you have success, you have reached your goal as a priest or as a, a leader of a local um, local part of the Chinese government, then you will succeed and get a higher position. And if you succeed in this higher position, you will get an even higher position. And that is what is called meriocracy. The leaders are elected because of their intelligence, their moral strength, and their qualifications to do the job that they are elected to do. And the next thing is human rights. Well, both the Catholic Church and China is based on the idea of human rights. You can read in the Chinese constitution that the whole state is founded on the idea of human rights. And the same is the idea of the Catholic Church. Well, there are many human rights, and in the Catholic Church they uh, certainly know that human right number one is the right to get something to eat so you can survive. In China, 800 million people has had the possibility of having something to eat. This is the greatest success of the Chinese Communist Party. It took them 30 years to give 800 million people the right to survive, something to eat and also a job and a meaningful existence as a part of the working Chinese state. So China is the, the primary fulfillment of the Christian goals. But of course there are different views on certain aspect of morality. In China they have had a policy you can only have one child and therefore abortion has been legal. The, uh, the Catholic Church is very much against abortion. But remember, one state in Europe where there are most abortions, it is Italy. Italy is the oldest Catholic state in Europe. And there, uh, the Catholics in Italy, they are not against abortion. So you shouldn't expect China to be more against abortion than they are in Italy run by Catholics. So I think the human right um, uh, views of China is full on the level of the human rights in the Catholic Church. And remember, there is no situation in world history where 
the ch- the Catholic Church has lifted 800 million people up from poverty to some kind of middle class level. That is what is done in China, but the Catholic Church has never done anything like that. Here we have the question of free will. Both in China and the Catholic Church, we believe in free will. We are not like Lutherans, like Protestants. They do not believe in the free will. In the Protestant states in Northern Europe, the whole state is based on the idea that the citizens do not have a free will. Therefore, the state has to decide everything about education, about uh, marriage, about way of living, and so on and so forth. Therefore, in the Northern Europe, it is uh, often said that the only family you have as a citizen in Denmark, Sweden, Norway, the only family you have is the state. That is not the idea of the Catholic Church, and that is certainly not the idea of China. In China, you have to work to earn your own living, and this is the Catholic idea of how a society should run. Here, I'm talking about morality. Well, as I have told you, there is somehow the same morality. It is very much centered around the family. The family is the basic union of the society. This is the view of the Pope and of Xi Jinping. They are quite united about this uh, question. So there is not much difference between the morality of China and the morality of the Catholic Church. And when it comes to global ideals, well, both the Catholic Church and China wants to develop the poor countries. China has this Belt and Road Initiative that is creating infrastructure and industries in the poor countries in Asia and Africa. They also want to connect to Southern America and to Europe if it's possible. Even to USA they want to connect, but the Americans they are very much against The Americans, they respect the Pope, but only as far as the Pope is a far-out spiritual figure. As soon as he's asking USA or any other country to change their way of organizing the society, they, they don't want to listen to the Pope anymore. They want the Pope to be a... 100% spiritual figure that has no practical influence on the life of Americans or other uh, people around the world. But China, they are working in practice. They have their own religion. They are not Catholics. They are Confucians. But they work in practice to implement infrastructure and create industry and middle class and raise the level of living not only in China but around the world. Americanism. The Pope has several times uh, talked against Americanism. This is an old idea of the Catholic Church that America shouldn't be the leader of the whole world. America is not an exceptional country. Moral rules in this world, they are going not only for Europe and Asia and Africa, but for USA too. So the Pope can't accept the idea of exceptionalism. Uh, That is the basic idea of the neocons and Donald Trumpist in USA. And of course, the Chinese state and the Chinese Communist Party totally agree with the Pope in this regard. When it comes to Protestantism, well, both the Pope and Xi Jinping are very critical. We had the Reformation in Europe and after that the Catholic Church has had a lot of problems with Protestants. 
when it comes to China, some of the most evil anti, uh, anti-Chinese architects in USA, they are Protestants. So there is a basic for the view that Protestants, they just hate China, and therefore China do not like Protestants. But don't make a mistake. It is fully legal to be a Protestant in China, and it's also fully legal to be a Catholic. There's freedom of religion in China. Don't misunderstand this. This is in the Chinese constitution. There's freedom of religion. But these religions, they have to respect the Chinese law. If they do not respect the Chinese law, they will not be allowed to operate in China. And here to the last, worship the dead. Well, in the Chinese religion, you worship the dead. You have uh, altars and uh, memorial places for your family, your family members that passed away. And this is the same idea we have in the Catholic religion. We worship the death. Some of the death we call saints. Some others, they are only passed away members of our own family. We can pray to the dead and pray for the dead. So the idea of the Chinese religion called Confucianism and the Catholic religion is somehow the same in this very, very important point. We worship the dead, we respect the dead, not as in some other religion, Protestantism and atheism. When you're dead, you're just gone. You, your family is allowed to forget everything about you because you won't come back. In Protestantism, it's told that you'll come back when Jesus returns. Well, but that hasn't happened yet, and no one knows when Jesus will return. Maybe he will never return. So the Protestants shouldn't expect to uh, be in communication with their dead parents and grandparents and family and saints and so on and so forth. But Catholics, we believe in communication with the dead exactly as they do in China. And this is what I wanted to tell you about China and the Catholic Church. These two organizations have so many similar points that they should learn to work together. But at the moment, Catholics are not very popular in China. And there are several reasons for that. But the basic reason is that China is not accepted in the Vatican. The Pope has no diplomatic relations with China. They have diplomatic relations with Taiwan, but not with China. And when the Pope do not have diplomatic relations with China, then he cannot expect that the Chinese will respect the followers of the Pope, that is the Catholics. There are 12 million Catholics in China, but they do not have perfect freedom. No, I'm sorry to say, but that is the truth. And who has the fault for that? The fault is on the Pope and on the Vatican. They can show that they respect the 1.4 billion Chinese. They can accept the Chinese state. They can establish diplomatic relations with China. And then most of the problems with repression of Catholics in China will be gone. Okay, thank you for listening to this video. Hi.